So in my previous class, I have discussed the solutions for the questions in the assignment in work power energy. That means I have discussed the solutions of the questions numbering from 31 to 42 in my previous class. So now I am going to continue the discussion of the solutions for the assignment in work power energy starting from question number 43 onwards. Come on, look at the question number 43 on the screen. So in case you are already, you have worked out the next 10 questions already, in case you are not having any doubts in the next 10 questions or 12 questions, you can skip this class and go to the next class. Come on, look at the question number 43 on the screen. A body of mass M initially at rest on a smooth hardy surface accelerates uniformly and acquires velocity v1 in time t1. The work done on the body in time t is. So the body is moving on the smooth surface. So here it is given that the body moves with uniform acceleration starting from rest. So the final velocity after time t. given by Vf equal Vi plus A into T. To given that the final velocity is V1 at time T equal T1. Initial velocity is 0. So we can write acceleration equal to V1 by T1. So the work done on the body can be taken as equal to the work done by the resultant force the body is moving on the smooth horizontal surface, no work is done by the gravitational force on the body and no work is done by the normal reaction force on the body by the surface. So therefore work done on the body is same as the work done by the force applied on the body by the external agent or work done by which is the, that means work done on the body. In time t is work done by the resultant force that is same as the work done by the force applied on the body by the agent. So horizontal component is the resultant force on the body or matter of the resultant force of the body in the direction of the motion. Can write m into a. So work done in time t. I mean work done by the resultant force of the body in time t. The resultant for the body is constant if acceleration is constant. And if the constant force acts in the direction of displacement, work done by the constant force is equal to F into S. Magda the resultant force of the body is equal to M into A, magda the displacement is equal to half A T square. That is half M A square T square. Now I can substitute here. A equal to V1 by T1. So work done on the body in time T, you can write M V1 square T square by 2 T1 square. That's the answer. Same result will be used to answer even for the next question. So when you are asked to find average power in the next question, 44, I think you are asked to calculate the average power. So the average power delivered by the agent is equal to work done by the agent divided by time interval. In the present example, work done by the agent is same as the work done by the, I mean work done by the resultant force, same as the work done by the force applied by the agent on the body. Because no work is done by the gravitational force and no work is done by the smooth surface on the body. So work done by the resultant force of the body, same as the work done by the agent on the body. So average power is equal to work done by time interval. So W by T. So divide the previous equation with time T. You get the answer for 44 also from this mv1 square t by 2t1 square. If 
you want to copy this working, you can take a pause and copy the working. So for question number 43, second option is the answer. The question number 44 also I have discussed actually the solution. I mean I have discussed the solution of 44 in the previous question. The average power in time t that I have already discussed. So for this question you get the answer as first option is the answer here. Then see the well, first and uh, second options look the same. You can write any one of them. Both are correct here. So next I am going to discuss the 45. 45 is also based on the previous question. It asked to find instantaneous power after time t. For that you have to find instantaneous velocity after time t. So instantaneous velocity after time t is given by v equal to a into t because the body started from rest and moves with uniform acceleration. So instantaneous power delivered by the agent is equal to instant the force applied by the agent of the body into instantaneous velocity. F is the value of the hurry and the force acting on the body by the agent. Or resultant that is same as the matter resultant for that you can write m into a and v equal to a t. So you get m a square t. You can write a equal to v1 by t1. So instantaneous power after time t. You can write m v1 square t by t1 square. That's the answer. So for question number 45, second option is the answer. This question number 46, similar question, I have already discussed earlier. Therefore, you can try to do it yourself. You have to apply work energy theorem, same model I have done earlier in my one of the previous classes. And I discussed it. That means just after discussing about work energy theorem, I have discussed this problem. You can try to do this problem yourself with same procedure. So you get the first option as answer. Forty seven also similar question I have discussed here. So for 46, I have say that the same same model we have done in the earlier class. So first option is answer for 47th question. Same model I have done earlier in the class. So only for practice I have given one more problem of same model. So third option is answer, which are expect to do it because similar problem I have discussed already. Then you see the question number 48. Body of mass 1 kg is 10 kg is lifted vertically upwards by applying a constant force F equal to 196 newtons. And the block has moved 2 meters, the change in the kinetic of the body is equal to, you have to take G equal to 9.8 meter per second square. So here only two forces act on the block, one is the constant force applied on the block, which acts in the direction of the motion of the block, the vertical upward direction. The weight engine of the block block acts vertically downwards. According to the work energy theorem, change in the kinetic energy of the body is equal to total work done by all the forces acting on the body. That is work done by the constant force applied plus work done by the gravity force. Work done by the constant force applied, you can write F into F. Because the constant force acts in the direction of the displacement. F is the magnitude of the displacement. So work done by the gravitational force on the body body can write minus mgs because the gravitational force mg acts opposite to the displacement of the body. So here you can write f minus mg into f. 
F is given to be 196 Newton, mass of block 10 kg, G is 9.8 meter per second square. Matter of the displacement is 2 meters. We have expressed all the units in SI system, so you get also answer in SI units. So for question number 48, which I have just now discussed, second option is answer. Next I am going to discuss the question number 49. Block of weight 100 Newton is dragged along a rough horizontal surface by applying a horizontal force of 70 Newton. The question of friction is 0 0.2 and when the block has moved 50 centimeters. The change in the kinetic energy of the block is equal to. So, here you have to find the magnitude of frictional force on the block because change in the kinetic of the block is equal to total work done by all the forces acting on the block. So, let us consider the force acting on the block. Its weight mg acts vertically downwards. The normal reaction for the block by the floor acts vertically upwards. That kept left denote the magnitude of the horizontal force applied on the block which acts in the direct to the motion. Fk denote the magnitude of kinetic friction of the block which acts opposite to the direction of the motion. I choose the horizontal direction that is the direction of the motion of the block as positive to direction of x axis and vertically upward direction of the y axis. So, y component of resultant force on the block is denoted by Fy. You can write Fy equal to n minus mg, but there is no acceleration parallel to x. So, y component of resultant force of the block is 0. So, magnitude narrow reaction of the block is same as the magnitude of its weight mg. So, magnitude of force of kinetic friction of the block is equal to product of coefficient of friction into magnitude of narrow reaction or nu into mg. Nu is given to point to the weight temperature of the block is given to 100 newtons. So, magnitude of friction for the block will be 20 newtons. According to the work energy theorem, change in the kinetic of the block is equal to total work done by all the force acting on the block. That is, the work done with a constant force F applied on the block in the direction of its motion plus work done by force of friction plus work done by the gravitational force of the block plus work done by normal reaction for the block. WF represents work done by constant force F which acts in the direction of the displacement. You can write F into S. FW subscript small f represents work done by force of friction of the block that you can write minus FK into S because force of friction acts opposite to the direction of the displacement of the block. So, work done by gravitational force of the block is zero because the gravitational force Mg acts perpendicular to the displacement. WN represents work done by normal reaction on the block that is also zero because the normal reaction force on the block acts perpendicular direction to displacement. Therefore, change in the kinetic of the block you can write F minus F K E T S that is work done by resultant force of the block. Magnitude of force force applied is 70 newtons, magnitude of force of friction is 20 newtons. Magnitude of the displacement of the block is 50 centimeters or 0.5 meters. That comes out to be 25 dollars. So for question number 49, first option is answer. See the question number 50 here. The lean around to the body is decreased by 20 percent and the kinetic of the body decreases by. So, if the linear amount of the body is decreased by 20 percent, then magnitude of the final amount of the body 
will be equal hundred percent minus twenty percent means eighty percent of the initial motor. Let P one denote the magnitude of the initial motor and P two is the magnitude of final motor. So P two will be eighty percent of P one. Or P two by P one will be equal to four by five. Let K1 denote the initial kinetic energy of the body, and K2 denote the final kinetic energy of the body. So initial kinetic energy can be written as P1 square by 2m. Final kinetic energy of the body can write P2 square by 2m. As I discussed for a body in pure transitory motion, the kinetic energy if the body is given by p square by 2m where m is the mass of the body p is the magnitude of lean out of the body so k2 by k1 you get p2 by p1 whole square you can write p2 by p1 equal to 4 by 5 here so that comes out to be 16 by 25 So final kinetic energy divided by initial kinetic energy is equal to 16 by 25. So percentage decrease in the kinetic energy can be written as equal to actual decrease in the kinetic energy divided by initial kinetic energy into 100%. Percentage decrease in the kinetic energy. Actually, actual decrease in the kinetic energy divided by original kinetic energy into 100 percent. Actual decrease in the kinetic energy can write final kinetic initial kinetic energy decrease means initial minus final. Increase means you have to take final minus initial. So actual decrease in the kinetic energy equal initial kinetic energy K1 minus final kinetic energy divided by original kinetic energy K1 into 100 percent. This you can try to. If you want to copy the solution, you can start writing the solution. You can write K1 by K1 equal to 1, K2 by K1 is 16 by 25. You can simplify this yourself. So for question number fifty, first option is the answer. So next, I am going to discuss the question number fifty-one. This is also similar procedure, but is slightly different. If the transfer kinetic energy decreases by nineteen percent, then linear momentum decreases by. Similar to the previous problem, here also you can write denote initial kinetic energy by K1 and final kinetic energy by K2. So repeating the procedure of the previous problem, up to this step you can write K2 by K1 equal to P2 by P1 whole square. So it's given that kinetic energy decreases by 19 percent. So 100 percent minus 19 percent. Will be equal to 81 percent. So, when the kinetic energy decreases by 91 percent, the new kinetic energy K2 can be taken as 81 percent of the initial kinetic energy, or 81 by 100 times the initial kinetic energy, or K2 by K1. You can write 81 by 100. So, from first and second equation. You can write P2 by P1 equal to root of K2 by K1. That is equal to root of 81 by 100. So ratio of final momentum to the initial momentum, you get 9 by 10. Then percentage decrease in the magnitude of the linear moment of the body. The 
percentage decrease in the magnet of the linear moment of the body is equal to actual decrease in the linear moment of the body divided by initial momentum into 100 percent. This you can, if you want to copy the solution, you can copy it down. P2 by P1, you can write 9 by 10. So the momentum decreases by 10 percent. So for question number 51, First option is answer. That is momentum decreases by 10 percent. Next, I am going to discuss the question number 52. Two particles A and B having masses in the ratio 4 is to 9 are moving with equal kinetic energies. If they are brought to rest by applying equal constant retarding forces, the ratio of distances covered by them before coming to rest is actually this part. I have discussed in one of the special cases earlier. If you apply work energy theorem, change in the kinetic energy is equal to work done by retarding force on the body. I have to assume that the, both the particles are moving in the horizontal direction. So that work is done only by the retarding force and no work is done by the gradual force. Change in the kinetic energy is equal to final kinetic energy minus initial kinetic energy. Final kinetic energy is zero. Work done by the retarding force is minus F S because the retarding force acts opposite to the direction to the displacement. So distance travelled during the retarded motion before it comes to rest is given by initial kinetic energy divided by magnitude of the retarding force. Both the bodies are initially moving same initial kinetic energy and they are brought to rest by applying equal, equal constant retarding forces. Therefore, both the bodies travel same distance before coming to rest and therefore ratio of the distances covered by them before they come to rest will be 1 is to 1. This actually I have already discussed in one of the special cases. So for question number 52, third option is the answer. In the question number 53, in the previous question, the ratio of the times taken by them to come to rest is. So from Newton's second law, the external force acting on the body is equal to rate of change of linear over to the body. The force is constant. Then the instantaneous force can be taken as equal to the average value of the force. That is equal to final momentum minus initial momentum divided by time interval. Pi bar is initial momentum. Pf bar is the final momentum. Here both the bodies are brought to rest by applying equal retarding forces. So you can write F1 bar equal to F2 bar. F1 bar is represents the retarding force on the uh, first particle. F2 bar represents the retarding force on the second particle. So final momentum in each particle is zero here. So, when it already puts the first particle, you can write minus P1 bar by T1. P1 bar is the initial one to the first particle. The negative sign indicates that the retarding force acts opposite to the initial one to the particle. F2 bar is the retarding force in the second particle, which you can write minus P2 bar by T. P2 bar is the initial one to the second particle. This discussion also have done actually in the special case. If you consider magnitudes on both the sides, you can ratio the times taken to bring them to rest. Is equal to ratio the magnitudes of their initial momentum. Magnitude of linear momentum in terms of the kinetic energy is given by P equal to root of 2m into kinetic energy for a body in translator motion. So, magnitude of the initial amount of the first body can write root of 2m1 into kinetic energy. Kinetic energy I denote by k. The kinetic energy, I mean the initial kinetic k is same for both the bodies. So, ratio of the times taken them, I mean the ratio of the time taken by the two bodies to come to rest 
is equal to square root of the ratio of their masses. Ratio of the masses is given to be 4 is to 9. So therefore, ratio of the times taken to bring them to rest will be 2 is to 3. So for question number 53, second option is answer. Let's see the question number 54. This also comes under one of the special cases I have discussed earlier. Two particles A and B having masses in the ratio 4 is to 9. Are moving with the same linear momentum. If they are brought to rest by applying equal constant retarding forces, the rate of the distance covered by them before coming to rest is just as I have discussed in the previous questions, in the question number 52 and 53, so the initial kinetic energy of the body can be known as F in TS. I mean, if a body is moving in a straight line path with some initial kinetic energy, and if it is brought to rest by applying a constant retarding force, of magnitude F, then we can write K initial kinetic of the body called F into S. S is the distance travelled before coming to rest. So initial kinetic energy of the first body can write F into S1. S1 is the distance travelled by the first body before it comes to rest during the retarded motion. Initial kinetic of the second body are denoted by Ke2 that you can write F into S2. S2 is the distance travelled by the second body before before it comes to rest during its retarded motion. F is the magnitude of the retarding force applied on each body that is same. So ratio of the distances travelled by the boot two bodies before they come to rest, same as the ratio of their initial kinetic energies. Here momentum is same. So initial kinetic of first body can write P square by 2M1, where P is the magnitude of initial momentum of each body. Initial kinetic of second body can write P square by 2M2. So ratio of the distances travelled by the two bodies before they come to rest will be equal to the ratio of their initial kinetic energies, which is equal to inverse ratio of their mass. So you get the answer as 9 is to 4. So for question number 54, first option is the answer. Next see the question number 55, the ratio of the time taken by them to come to rest. You repeat the solution of 53 here, you have to repeat the solution of 53 for this question, ratio of the times taken to bring them to rest if they are brought to rest by applying equal and constant retarding forces, same as the ratio of the magnitudes of their initial momentum. Here it is given that the both the bodies are moving with the same momentum initially, therefore both the bodies take same time to come to rest. So ratio of the time taken to bring them to rest will be 1 is to 1. This also I have discussed in one of the special cases earlier. So for question number 55, third option is answer. See the question number 56, this I discuss in theory part. The total work done on a particle is equal to change in its kinetic energy always. According to the work energy theorem, change in kinetic energy of particle is equal to total work done by all the types of forces, including conservative forces and non conservative forces. That is equal to change in kinetic energy of the particle is the work done by conservative forces plus work done by other forces which are not conservative. This I discussed in theory part. So first option is answer. So next I am going to discuss the question number 57. 
300 joule of work is done in sliding a 2 kg block at constant velocity up an inclined plane to a vertical height of 10 meters. Taking the value of acceleration due to gravity g to be 10 meter per second square. The work done against friction is. So you are given the work done by the constant force applied on the body by an external agent. At cap left, do you know the magnet the constant force applied on the body by the external agent which acts in the direction of the motion. The weight mg of the block acts vertically downwards. Let n denote the normal reaction force on the block by the inclined surface which acts perpendicular to the inclined surface and directed away from the inclined surface. The force of sliding friction or kinetic friction on the block acts opposite to the direction of the motor block. According to the work energy theorem, the change in the kinetic energy of the block is equal to total work done by all the force acting on the block. That is work done by the constant force applied on the block by the external agent plus work done by the gravitational force plus work done by the normal reaction plus work done by the force of friction. Here the block is moving with constant velocity. So mass of the block is a constant. So if the velocity of the block is a constant, kinetic energy of the block is constant. Or change in the kinetic of the block is zero. So work done by the constant force F applied on the block is given to be 300 joules, which we'll substitute later. Work done the gravitational force of the block when the block rises through a vertical height h is given by minus mgh. As I discussed in the past, whenever the center of gravity of the block rises through a vertical height h, work done the gravitational force of the block will be equal to minus mgh because the gravitational force mg acts opposite to the displacement in the vertical direction. H is the magnitude of displacement in the vertical direction, which is given to be 10 meters. Work done by the normal reaction of the block is zero because the normal reaction acts perpendicular direction to displacement. At W subscript small f denote work done by friction for the block. Therefore, work done by the force of friction of the block, you get mgh minus wf. Mass of block is given to be 2 kg here. G is given as 10 meter per second square. H is equal to 10 meters. Work done by the constant force applied on the block by the agent is 300 joules. So work done by the friction force on the block is minus 100 joules. So work done against friction means you should take it as negative of work done by the friction force on the block. That will be plus 100 joules. That's the answer. This problem was given in one of the All India entrance examinations in the past. So if you want to copy the solution of this problem, you can take a pause and copy the solution of the problem. So for question number 57, first option is the answer. See the question number 58. Sand particles drop vertically with a negligible velocity at the rate of 1 kg per second onto a conveyor belt, moving horizontally at a speed of 1 meter per second. The power necessary to maintain constant speed of the belt. So extra force required to keep the belt moving is equal to 
from Kandare, from Judam Sekala is equal to rate of change of linear momentum of sand particles that is equal to V dm by dt. dm by dt gives you the rate at which sand particles are dropping or V into mod of dm by dt. V is the magnitude of the velocity of the conveyor belt and modulus of dm by dt gives you the the mass of the sand particles falling onto the conveyor belt per second that is the rate of increase of mass of sand particles onto the conveyor belt that is so dm by dt is v is 1 meter per second modulus of dm by dt is 1 kg per second that will be 1 newton extra power necessary to keep the belt moving is equal to magnitude the extra force to be applied to keep the belt moving into magnitude of velocity of the belt that is 1 newton into 1 meter per second that will be equal to 1 watt so that is one of the answers so rate of increase in the kinetic energy or rate of change in the kinetic energy of this sand particles dropping onto the conveyor belt you can write dk by dt dk is the increase in the kinetic energy sand particles in time dt that you can write half into dm by dt into v square dm by dt is the rate of increase in the mass of sand particles on the conveyor belt or rate of rate at which the mass of the sand particles are falling onto the conveyor belt that is given to 1 kg per second. The velocity is 1 meter per second. That comes out to 0.5 watts. That is the answer for the second part of the question. That means only if actual extra power used to meet the belt moving is 1 watt out of which only 0.5 watt appears in the form of kinetic energy of sand particles. That means the other half of the power will be lost. In the form of heat. So in case you want to copy the solution of this problem, you can take a pause and copy the solution of the problem. So for question number 58, second option is answer. See the question number 59, this problem was given one of the previous centers examination in M set. Particle of mass M has half the kinetic energy of another particle of mass M by 2. The speed of the heavier particle is increased by 2 meter per second. Its new kinetic energy equals the original kinetic of the lighter particle. The ratio of the original speed of the lighter and heavier particles is. In the next question, you are asked to find the original speed of the heavier particle here. So, we will solve both 59 and 60 at once. So, initial kinetic energy. of the of heavier particle of mass m is given to be half of the kinetic energy of 
mass m by 2 so kinetic energy the first particle let v1 be the denote first particle mass of first particle by m1 and original speed of first particle by v1 mass of second particle by m2 which is equal to m by 2 speed of the original speed of the heavier second particle lighter particle by v2 so initial kinetic of the first particle is equal to half m1 v1 square that is equal to half into initial kinetic of second particle half m2 v2 square so m1 v1 square is equal to half of m2 v2 square can write m1 equal to m here and m2 equal to m by 2 so you get v1 square equal to v2 square by 4 or v2 square is 4 v1 square or if you take modulus here v2 is 2 times v1 so rate of original speed of the lighter particle and heavier particles so second particle is the lighter particle first particle is the heavier particle that will be 2 by 1 so that will be the answer for 2 is to 1 will be the answer for first part question I mean for 59th question the next question I mean 60 is also based on same question you are asked to find variable speed of lighter particle it is given that if the speed of the heavier particle is increased by 2 meter per second that means kinetic energy uh, of the if the velocity of the first particle increased by 2 meter per second it is new kinetic energy equals original kinetic energy of lighter particle so new kinetic energy of first particle of mass m1 same as the kinetic energy of m2 new kinetic energy of m1 is equal to half into mass m1 to square of the new speed of m1 the new speed of the first particle is equal to original speed v1 plus 2 meter per second because speed is increased by 2 meter per second of m2 is equal to half m2 into v2 square ok now if we can cancel this. we can write m1 equal to m here and m2 equal to m by 2 we can substitute here v1 square or v2 square you can write 4 v1 square on the right side so if you cancel m here v1 plus 2 meter per second whole square is equal to v1 square we take positive root here because v1 and v2 are positive speeds here you get v1 plus 2 meter per second is equal to root 2 times v1 this you can simplify it yourself to complete the problem so v1 you get 2 by root 2 meter per second 2 meter per second by root 2 minus 1 the next you multiply in your end denominator with root 2 plus 1 you complete the calculations so you get v1 equal 2 into root 2 plus 1 meter per second v1 is the original speed of the first particle or heavier particle which you are asking in next question if you want to copy the solution you can take a pause and copy the solution of the problem so the ratio of the original speed of the lighter and heavier particles should be given as 2 is to 1 it is given in the reverse order here 1 is to 2 59 we can make it as 2 is to 1 for 60th question 
which also I have discovered variable speed of the heavier particle. In the previous question, what is the variable speed of the heavier particle? That is, that is the first option is the answer. So with this, I have completed discussion of all the questions from 31 to 60 in the assignment in work power ID. In my next class, I am going to show you the continuation for this assignment in work power ID. That is, I am going to show you the questions numbering from 61 to 90 in my next class. The questions uh, in the next uh, part of the assignment will be little more standard than the questions we have already discussed so far. So you first try them all the questions yourself. Then later you can check up your answers. 